Mount 31, welcome to example six. Before we get into example six, let me explain factorial notation. So N factorial has its own symbol. It looks like you're really excited about N. Maybe you've seen this before when people write N with like an exclamation point after it. It doesn't mean they really love the number. Um, it actually means something else in math. I still remember um, when I was taking Algebra 2, the extra credit problem for the week was 23 factorial. And I just remember, I remember submitting my answer saying, oh, it's somebody who's really excited about 23. And then I did, I did not get it right. Um, I found out, hey, factorials actually mean something or that exclamation point actually means something. So let me explain what it does mean. So n factorial, it's a mathematical operation that can be defined as using a recursive formula. The factorial of n, denoted by n with an exclamation point, is defined for a positive integer n as, and here's the main definition. I'll talk about how we start off, these are our starting terms, and then these are, this is really the recursive formula. Um, but what this is saying is n factorial, it is a massive product. It's a pro product of n times n minus one times n minus two, all the way down to two and one. So let me give you a couple of four examples and then I'll kick it back over to what my, my, my extra credit in Algebra 2 was that I got wrong, that I can still hold on to like 25 years later. I've, I've grown as a person. Um, so if I gave you something like seven factorial, all right, if n was seven, this would be seven times n minus one would be six times n minus two, which would be five. And then I would go all the way down times four times three times two times one, whatever that product is, that is what we define as n factorial. If I gave you something like eight factorial, it would be eight times seven times six times five times four times three times two times one. All right, you can imagine if I gave you nine factorial, it'd be nine times eight times seven times six times five times four times three times two times one. So to go back to my 10th grade days, what should I have done to get that extra credit? It should have been 23 times 22 times 21, all the way down to two times one, okay? So that's all right, I did okay in algebra two, I'm not knocking it, but I, and I did learn something. Now, one thing I do wanna point out, watch this, okay? I, this, this might make your brain melt for a little bit, but you're with me that seven factorial is seven times six times five times four times three times two times one. All right, and eight factorial is eight, times all of this, right? Now, we just said all of that is seven factorial, so I could write this as eight times seven factorial, right? Mind blown, am I right? You could write this as nine times eight times seven factorial. You could have just written this as nine times eight factorial. You can go nuts with this stuff. These factorials really build on each other, and especially when you start dividing them, things cancel out all the time. Um, all right, now we did need some starting points, right? We needed to define our first two terms. So zero factorial is actually defined to be one. One factorial is one because you're just multiplying that one by itself, basically. And we had to define zero factorial as one, otherwise every factorial would be zero after that. Okay, so we've got all of this going on. I wanna show you where the factorial button lives on your calculator, because I, I could calculate seven factorial all right, you can sit here and you can go seven times six times five times four times three times two times one. That's fine, that just takes a little while. And can you imagine if you were back in the 90s doing your extra credit in that Algebra two class with Mr. Hoffman? All right, uh, it'd be pretty obnoxious to type in 23 times 22 times 21 all the way down to two and one. Maybe you'd do it for extra credit. But let me show you where the button lives on your calculator to help you work around that, all right? So we're gonna go ahead and we'll do seven factorial together. So hit seven, okay? And then I want you to hit your math key. We've hit math before. And go over to your PRB menu, all right? We're gonna be here a, a few times as we proceed through these chapters, but I think you'll see option four. There's the exclamation point. So let me go down, either go down to four and hit enter or just hit the number four and seven factorial is 50, 40, all right? So if you wanted to do my extra credit, I keep harping on it. Again, I've grown as a person, I've moved past it. Um, to hit, and that's a joke, I really have. Um, so hit math, go over to PRB, option four, 
Look at that number. That is huge. That is 2.585 with 22 zeros after it. All right, so I would love to make 23 factorial dollars this year. It's just, it's not gonna happen. All right, now factorial growth is actually faster than exponential growth. So when I talk about how I'd love to make factorial dollars, if you ever ask your boss for a raise or get put on some kind of pay scale, ask yourself for a factorial raise every year. Every year you can. You could even say for the first year you'll work for one factorial dollars. Because imagine this, let's say your first year working, and now it would suck, right? You would only make one factorial dollars. You'd make a dollar, right? But imagine by the time you got to your 10th year, right? Your, your 10th year in, all right? How much are you making? Well, that's not too bad. Just 10 years in, you're making $3,628,800. It's pretty sweet. And then imagine your next year. If you're only 11 years into your career, you're making a sweet chunk of change. So that's what I'm saying. Tell your boss, man, I will work for a dollar. You can pay me one dollar for the whole year, but you've got to put me on a factorial uh, pay raise scale. Dude, you're going to be like swimming in money before too long. All right, so that's my, my intro into factorials. Now let's go ahead, we're gonna go back to explicit formulas and let's find our standard, let's find our first five terms. So let me go ahead and scooch this up so we have some room here. All right, so for the first five terms, let's find a sub one. a sub one is gonna be one plus one factorial over two times one. All right, so I'm gonna do this a piece at a time. I'm gonna go two factorial over two. Well, two factorial is two times one that's in ratio to two, you can see that the twos are gonna cancel out and that's gonna leave me with one. So I'm just gonna to start to keep track of my sequence. I'm starting with one. Let's see what a sub two will give me. a sub two is two plus one factorial over two times two. All right, that is three factorial over four. Well, three factorial is three times two times one over four. That's six fourths. So that's gonna get me to three halves. All right, I got enough room, let's do a sub three. a sub three is going to be three plus one factorial over two times three. All right, that's gonna be four factorial over six. So that's gonna be four times three times two times one over six. I can see that the three and the two and the six cancel out. So that's just gonna leave me with four. All right, now the direction said find the first five terms, so let's, let's continue on here. Let me put a little separating squiggles. All right, so we're gonna go a sub four. That will be equal to four plus one factorial over two times four. So that is now five factorial over eight. So we have five times four times three times two times one over eight. Well, I can see the eight here. I've got a four and a two. That's gonna cancel with the eight. I told you with these factorials, lots of stuff starts to cancel. So on the numerator, I have five times three, which is, I can do the math in my head. Hold up, that's 15, nailed it. And then 15 times one is just 15. So all I have here is 15. All right, a sub five. Let's see, we've got five plus one factorial over two times five. So I'm looking at six factorial over 10, which would be six times five times four times three times two times one, all over 10. And I can see the five and the two cancel. So this one's gonna be a little bit more complicated to do mentally. I could also plug it in my calculator. Um, six times four is 24. Uh, 24 times three should be 72. So as I finish my sequence out, there we go. Oops. And make a slightly better squiggles there. <clears throat> All right, so before we get out of this section, I just wanna show you how you can graph sequences on your calculator. So I'm gonna flip over to my computer, I'm gonna show you how this works, and then we will wrap up the section. All right, I'll see you in a few, gang, bye. Hey Math 31, I just wanna take a moment before we get out of here, review how we input sequences into our calculator. And then I wanna show you how you can graph a sequence should you want to, just so you have that information. All right, so if you remember our mode, 
I have myself, oh, actually, I don't. It's a good thing I checked this. I thought I left this in sequence mode, but I didn't. So let me go put it into sequence mode. All right, and go back to my home screen. Now I'll go to my y equals, and we always want to leave our n min at 1, because usually we are starting with the first term in our sequence. And my explicit formula, let me clear this out, I should have n plus 1 factorial. So let me put that binomial in parentheses. If you'll recall, we just said for our factorial, hit your math key. Either scroll right three times to PRB, or I'm pretty lazy. I've told you I love being lazy. I'm actually just going to scroll left once and do option four. I'm going to divide that by 2n. And I want to encourage you to really put parentheses around that denominator. And let me just talk a bit about what happens if you don't. So I'm going to delete these, and then I'm going to put them back in just so we can talk about this. All right, so when you don't put the parentheses around the denominator, what your, de your calculator is going to do is it's going to divide n plus 1 factorial by 2, but it's going to multiply by n as opposed to dividing by n. Because with this term in our denominator, we ultimately want to divide by n. That's what this is saying, divide by 2 and then divide by n. When you don't put parentheses around that denominator, your calculator is going to divide by 2, but multiply by n. So you get into some trouble there. So let's put this here. We're going to go to n. All right. And then we always need our, our starting out point. So if we remember from our work, I didn't write it here, but when we were just doing it by hand, our, start, our starting number was 1. When we plugged 1 in, we got 1 back out. All right. So let's go to our table and let's just check our work. And we got these numbers, right? We got 1, 1.54, 15, and we ended with 72. If we had gone one more iteration, if we had found a sub 6, it would have been 420. All right, so I just want to show you. Let's hit zoom 6. All right, I want you to see the graph, and then we'll, we'll mess with the window just a little bit. So when I hit zoom 6, I, I'm not sure if you could just see those little points light up. So let's go and adjust our window and think about what we want to set our mins and maxes to. All right. So this is great that my min is starting at 1. Fantastic, because we always want the first term in our sequence. But I didn't go all the way up to a sub 10. When we were doing this, we just went to a sub 5. All right, And I want the plot to start at an n of 1, and I want it to step by 1, meaning I want uh, a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, so that n is going one number at a time. I don't want a sub 1.5. I don't want a sub 2.7. I just want those to be whole numbers. So I want to go from 1 to 5, skipping every one unit. Now, if I hit graph, again, I'm not going to hit zoom 6, because if I hit zoom 6, it'll default back. But if I hit graph, you can see a little bit more uh, of what I got. Actually, not too much more now that I look at it. But I've got n1. I, I haven't done a whole lot, but I've got n1, I can't use my, my words, I've got the n minute 1 and the n max at 5. The reason you couldn't see any difference, and I was just realizing it in my head, is because those those values, right, when you get to um, n, uh, a sub 6, right, 420, 20, 80, they're so high up on the graph you can't see them anyways. So that's why your graph doesn't look that much different. We still need to adjust the y min and max. All right, so here we go. For the x min and max, all right, I would like my x-axis to start at 0 because, again, my n min is 1, so I don't need any negative side of the x-axis. Over here, I'm also just going to go to 5 because n and x are in line with each other. They're our input. They're our domain-ish, if you will. All right, but I really want to go down to y min and y max and take a look at those. So in terms of my y values, or at least my sequence values, right, it looks like they started at 1. And we got up to 72. I get that I could go further and go to 420 and 2880, but let's just adjust this. So if I'm starting at 1, I'll just go a little bit below that. I'll set my y min to 0. And then I'll set my y max. Well, what's a number that's a little bit larger than 72? We could put 100. You could put 75. You could put 74. Why don't we go with 100 right now? Okay. And I will say, hey, can you make a tick mark on my x-axis every 10 units? All right, so I've adjusted my window. Now let me hit graph. And it might be a little bit hard to see, but here they are. Let me hit trace. So you see our first order pair is at 1. Our next one is at 1.5. And then I jumped to 4, and then 15, and then 72. All right, so we can start to see that 
increasing function. All right. Now, if you want to see a little bit more action, you could probably extend your x-axis. That wouldn't hurt. That might make it a little bit easier to view. Let me hit graph. You can still kind of see them shooting up, right? You can see your sequence values. This isn't the most exciting graph in the world. I just wanted you to see your options. And you can hit trace again, or you could have just gone to your table and gotten all those y values. All right. So with that, that rounds out this section. And I just want to remind you where we came from. So I'm going to scroll up. So I hope at the end of this, you can write the terms of a sequence defined by an explicit formula and also terms of a sequence defined by a recursive formula. So an explicit formula is like we saw in examples one, two, and three. A recursive formula we saw in examples four and five. And then in example six, we introduced factorial notation along with an explicit formula. All right, so that, that, wound, or that wraps up section 9.1. So I will see you in section 9.2. Thanks so much, gang. Bye.